Wife cheated on me with my brother, the golden child, and got pregnant, so I divorced her. Now they're struggling and begging for money. I, 29 male, got divorced from my wife, 27 female, two months ago. She'd been cheating on me with my estranged brother, 27 male, for a while. And four months ago, I finally found out when she told me she was pregnant. Initially, she tried to convince me that the baby was ours, but my brother's frequent visits made me question everything. So, I decided to check her phone. I confronted her about what I found, and she ended up confessing that she'd been cheating on me with my brother since she pretty much had no other option anymore. My family and I hadn't been on speaking terms ever since I left home when I turned 18. They'd always treated me like an outsider, even in my own family, and my brother was the golden child. I thought it was a little weird to start the party meant for me without me, but then I saw the cake and completely lost it. I finally confronted my parents and asked them why they hadn't thrown me a party for an actual real achievement instead. They told me that after my acceptance letter, they didn't want my brother to feel left out, so they threw him a party instead. They said that instead of throwing a tantrum, I should be trying to uplift my brother as well. That just completely broke me, and that very day I made up my mind to never come back to them ever again, and I stuck to it. I paid my way through college by taking out a loan and working and then rented a tiny apartment with a friend after I was done with college. I never spoke to my parents after I moved out for college, and neither did they try to get through to me either. Of course, ages have passed since then, and last year my brother reached out to me online to ask if I wanted to reconnect with him and my parents since they really seemed to miss me. A lot had happened since I'd left home. Two years ago, I'd gotten married to my ex-wife, and I was leading a very comfortable life but I don't think I'd ever moved on from what happened with my parents. So, I did end up agreeing to meet them. It was awkward and felt uncomfortable initially, but they were making an effort to fix what they'd done to me in the past, so I felt obliged to make an effort for them as well. I invited them to my home, which I guess was my first mistake. Introducing my brother to my ex, they met, they started an affair, and she got pregnant. I was really happy when I found out she was pregnant since I'd obviously thought the baby was mine. But then, like I'd mentioned earlier, my brother started visiting more often after I found out about the pregnancy. While initially it didn't bother me, it started getting weird when he would touch my wife's pregnant stomach and speak into it. My ex told me it wasn't that big of a deal, but I just couldn't shake off a sneaking suspicion that my brother had more to do with the baby than he was letting on. Six months into the pregnancy, I decided to go through her phone while she was asleep, and it confirmed everything I was terrified of. The texts between my ex and my brother proved that it was actually his baby, and they'd been together for a while now. Not only that, my ex had no intention of ever letting me know the baby wasn't even mine. She and my brother planned on telling me about the affair after the baby was born, and then she'd get a divorce from me and finally get with my brother while they'd live off the fortune from the child support I'd be paying. The next morning, I asked her about the texts, and while she did try to deny it at first, she eventually gave up and confessed. That was the end of my marriage of two years. Of course, my parents sided with my brother and my ex. All their words about the two of us being equally important to them were just words after all. When my ex and my brother announced our divorce on social media, and her decision to marry him, my entire family was fully supportive of their decision. Nobody cared that they'd ruined my mental health and broken my trust. Not just that, my ex had been lying to me for six months, telling me the baby was mine. It felt as though I'd not just lost my wife but also my kid, and it just hurt so much. My parents told me this was for the best and once again refused to even act like my brother had wronged me. In fact, they told me I should be happy that my ex and brother had finally found happiness and should join the celebrations. Once again, I cut them out of my life, and that messed up my divorce as well. My ex-wife walked away with a huge settlement sum in my car, all because my family was on my wife's side in the divorce since she was with my brother now. She and her lawyer cooked up some story about how I was toxic and controlling and forced her to quit her job, even though it was her own choice. My family reinforced it by saying that the reason they'd cut me off in the first place was because of my misogynistic attitude and temper tantrums. So, the evidence was stacked against me, and I lost a lot of money in the divorce, but thankfully I got to keep the house. When the divorce was finalized, I was just glad I was done with this crap now and wouldn't have to see any of these god-awful people ever again. Luckily, there's no waiting period for a divorce where I live, and my ex-wife didn't contest it either, so I was able to wrap it all up as quickly as possible so that I could move on with my life. It was difficult to forget about all of this, but I drowned myself in work and pushed myself to be better so that I could move on from this nasty episode as fast as I could. 
that paid off since two weeks ago, I got a promotion, a better position, better salary, and a better company car. The works, basically, and I couldn't have been happier about it. So, I decided to treat myself to a solo dinner date at one of my favorite restaurants. But I made the mistake of posting about it online. And within a day or two, my mother contacted me and asked me to come visit them. I was baffled as to what they could possibly want from me now since we hadn't even spoken after the divorce was finalized and they supported my ex and her lies. I managed to ignore it for a few days, but then she started calling me relentlessly. Eventually, when nothing else worked, she showed up at my office. She simply refused to leave and got into a fight with the receptionist, which was pretty embarrassing. So, I promised that I'd visit in a few days, which was how I was finally able to convince her to leave. A couple of days after that, I finally visited my family. They'd used the settlement amount to move into a bigger house so they could accommodate the baby as well, who'd been born just a little over three weeks ago. I guessed that the alimony was also being used to pay the bills, but truth be told, it didn't really affect me that much since the alimony was a really small part of my salary at this point, and I could afford it. My brother wasn't home, and my ex was asleep, so it was just my parents who spoke to me. I didn't try to make any small talk and simply waited for them to get to the point. After around five minutes of silence, my father blurted out that my brother had been fired from his job and that the alimony and settlement just weren't cutting it anymore. They said that they'd seen the post about my promotion and were hoping that I could help them out since they were running low on money now. My parents retired a long time ago, my brother was out of a job, and my ex obviously wasn't going back to work anytime soon. The alimony wasn't enough to pay the bills for a family of five, especially with a newborn in the house, and I knew that too. However, I was shocked that they'd even had the audacity to approach me for it after everything that had happened. I was so shocked that I didn't even have anything to say for a good few minutes, but finally, I came to my senses and decided that I didn't need to entertain any of this. I simply got up and left without a word. When I reached the door and opened it, I found my brother standing outside. My parents were telling me to stay back and hear them out, and my brother looked a little alarmed to see me there. I still didn't say anything and proceeded to leave. It was raining pretty heavily, and it was a short walk to where I'd parked my car outside their lawn, so I got completely drenched, and I was already in a horrible mood. Now, this is where I might have been the idiot because my parents and brother came after me, and while I was looking for my keys in my pocket, they decided to ask me for help one last time. This time, it was my brother who was making the plea. He's always been smug and arrogant, a direct result of the way our parents treated us, so it was weird to see him asking me for help, and it must have taken a lot of trouble to convince him, so they were definitely being honest about the bad phase. Anyway, I sort of lost my cool and ended up telling them to leave me alone, and that they could beg on the streets if they were really that hard pressed for cash since a stranger who knew nothing about them was probably more likely to take pity on their condition than I was. Having said that, I got in my car and drove away, leaving them in the rain. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty satisfying to do that to my family since they'd done nothing but mistreat me my whole life. It's been two days since that happened, and well, I'm not sure if I'm right anymore. My mother has been texting me non-stop, and I feel so guilty for not helping them out. I know I have a lot, and sending them a little money won't actually hurt me, but after everything that's happened, it just feels like I'm being used, quite frankly. So, am I the idiot for not helping my family out with money after they took my ex's side in the divorce? Update, so, I decided not to help them out. It was a pretty big deal for me since I felt awfully guilty about how I was just going to abandon them. But then I realized that, well, they'd been doing that to me my entire life. Even in the divorce, they'd been the ones who had thrown me under the bus, so why should I think twice before doing the same to them? I told my mother to stop pestering me, or else I'd be forced to get my lawyers involved, and it wouldn't end well for them. That naturally irked them, and so my brother showed up at my house a few days ago to talk to me. He told me that while he felt sorry for how I'd been treated my entire childhood, he couldn't help the fact that he was inherently better than me which is why he was also treated like that. He also told me that I should stop being so weird with our parents for doing what any other normal parent would have done in their place and just help them out since they're in a tough spot instead of holding grudges like a child. I laughed in his face because of how absolutely demented he sounded talking crap like that. I told him that instead of trying to put me down and manipulate me into helping them out, he should probably be out looking for a job and not wasting his time like this. That touched a nerve, I think, and he started yelling at me about how I was just jealous of the fact that not just our parents, but even my ex-wife, preferred him over me and I was taking revenge by refusing to give my family money. 
I didn't even bother to fight back and just agreed with him, saying that all I was doing was just to get revenge on him and there wasn't much that he could do about it. So he got super pissed off and told me that he was going to come after me and force me to cough up the money one way or another and I'd regret ever speaking to him that way. Honestly, I'm not taking any of that seriously in the least. He can try to scare me all he wants, but it's just not going to work because I know he's not capable of doing anything at all to me. I'm unbothered. Update? Well, three days ago my brother visited me and tried to convince me to help them, but he was unsuccessful. My parents have already tried in the past, and it didn't work out for them either. So this time my ex decided to call me up and speak to me. I was skeptical about answering. But then I decided to answer anyway because if I didn't, then they'd probably visit again and waste some more of my time. So I spoke to her, and it was insane how entitled and cruel these people can be. She started very politely and told me that, like I already knew, she and her family were struggling with money. While she realized that I had absolutely no need to help them after whatever they put me through, she still wanted me to think about it and be the bigger person here. She tried to make me sympathetic by reminding me that my parents had paid for everything growing up and even she had done her best to be a good wife. Like, yeah sure, except for the part where my parents didn't give a damn about me and always preferred my brother, and she actually ended up cheating on me with the same brother I used to complain about. So yeah, that didn't work at all, and I told her that while I felt awful about what was happening to them, I was already spending a lot of unnecessary money by paying her alimony, which she technically didn't even deserve since she cheated on me but managed to get it out of me since my family had no qualms about lying and making me the bad guy for their gain. She started sobbing on the call and told me that I was being selfish and heartless, which was just ironic. When I still refused to help, she told me that my brother was right and that I'd left her with no choice but to get the law involved. She said that she was going to demand a higher alimony now and drag me to court to humiliate me once again. Honestly, I'd like to see them try. The first time around, I was so emotionally drained and depressed that I didn't even bother fighting back or trying to prove them wrong. I just gave in and agreed to pay the alimony without even attempting to prove their claims as false. I never was toxic or controlling or any of those things that they claimed, so she had no reason to cheat on me and didn't deserve a single dollar out of the divorce. But whatever, I didn't care then and just wanted to get the divorce over with, no matter the financial impact of it. This time, though, I'm ready to fight and make sure that I teach my family the lesson of a lifetime. Update, in a shocking turn of events, my ex-wife was true to her words for the first time and actually filed for a higher amount as alimony, given that I'd been promoted. But this time I wasn't going to let things slide so easily. I got all our common friends involved and told them whatever was happening, and even filled them in on past events since most of them only knew that we'd separated and didn't even know about the real reason. They were all obviously very shocked, and I told them that I needed them to testify against my ex-wife if it came down to it and they agreed readily. I also told my lawyer that I wanted to discontinue the whole alimony arrangement altogether since she didn't deserve it in the least. I spent the past few days gathering all the evidence I could find of my parents and brother being horrible people who never bothered to treat me like an equal and are now hounding me for money just because they know about my promotion. I'd had enough, and I needed to get rid of these disgusting parasites once and for all, so I wasn't going to stop and think about their feelings at all. I managed to convince some of my cousins who'd watched me get treated like an outsider in my own home while growing up to speak on my behalf, and they were kind enough to do so as well, even though we were never particularly close or anything. My lawyer was pretty pleased with whatever we'd managed to gather and told me that this would be airtight, and we might actually be able to stop paying alimony. It was already known that she cheated on me, but the reasons given by my ex painting me as the villain and my brother as the hero who rescued her were all lies. Even though I hadn't tried to fight back the last time, I was certainly going to set the record straight this time, and I did so too. My family had literally nothing to say for themselves when I brought up several video testimonials that my friends and a couple of relatives had recorded in my favor to prove that everything that my family had said was a lie and that I wasn't the kind of person that they'd made me out to be. I guess that they'd figured they'd be let off the hook this time just as easily as the last time. But I wasn't that emotionally fragile anymore. And honestly, whatever they'd put me through had made me a lot stronger. Yesterday, it was finalized that I wouldn't have to pay my ex any alimony anymore in light of the new information that had surfaced. I was probably the happiest man on earth when I realized that it was over. It was so satisfying to see the smug look completely wiped off my family's faces, and my ex looked like she was going to start crying at any second. But yeah, I couldn't care less about her crying anymore and was simply done with this whole thing.
I thought that I'd go home and treat myself to some great takeout and a movie, but my family obviously had to do everything in their power to stop me from experiencing happiness. I was only a few yards away from my house when I noticed my brother's car parked right outside my home, and I was really confused as to why he'd be there. I still went in, and there was my family, standing outside my door and blocking my way in. I was taken aback and didn't even know what to say, but I decided to act like this didn't bother me. I told them to get off my property if they didn't want me to call the police. That's when my dad spoke up and told me that I should be ashamed of myself for what I'd done today. He went on to lecture me about how I had no sense of responsibility toward my family and had betrayed them all by refusing to help them out when they needed it the most. After he was done, I simply refused to answer or engage in any sort of conversation with him and stood there silently. I just didn't want to give them the satisfaction of getting a rise out of me because I'm guessing that was the goal. To get me so emotional that eventually I'd give up and do something rash and stupid. But I'm not an idiot, and their desperate measures weren't going to help their case at all, which they should have realized by then. My silence probably pissed them off even more, and even though my mother demanded that I treat my dad with respect and talk to him, I still refused to speak. I could see them getting agitated because they clearly hoped for a huge fight, but nothing of the sort was happening. After some more yelling, my brother finally snapped and grabbed me by the collar. He then proceeded to try and hit me, but my dad managed to pull him back just in time while he yelled about how I was nothing but a jealous loser who would never amount to anything. I mean, it was really funny coming from an unemployed guy still living with his parents and begging his brother for money to live on. But okay, I told them that they needed to leave or else I'd actually call the cops, and seeing how they're broke, they should probably make a run for it within the next five minutes. Begrudgingly, they went away, but not before one last ditch attempt by my mother to shame me into coughing up some money. It still didn't work, and eventually, they left. It's been almost a day since that happened, and they haven't tried to contact me since. I'm truly hoping that it stays this way. Story 2. My wife, 33 female cheated on me, 33 male in December. I walked in on them at his house, as I knew what was going on. It was my stepdaughter's father. I have been kicking him off our property for years and keeping his anger in check. I spent all day taking care of the house, the pets, the yard, and her daughter, 4 female. When we got married, she had me donate my beater so I could drive one of her cars. I even did a little part-time work on the side at the law firm where she works. My days began at 6 a.m. and ended as late as 2 a.m. some nights because of all the chores I was responsible for. I tried to forgive her but continued catching her talking to him and even making plans to sleep with other male friends, all the while assuring me she wanted us to work. She abused me sexually and emotionally, telling me that cheating was my fault because I should have done something to stop it and using guilt and threats to make me have sex with her when I was clear I wasn't ready for that. She got pregnant after I caught her with him, and when I asked for a DNA test, she went and got an abortion immediately and blamed me for that too. I decided to leave last month and quit my job. Since then, my family has been supporting me and I struggle every day to get out of bed and even just feed myself. We were married for less than a year. I am getting no spousal support, no car, had to leave my job, and lost half of my family, her family, and my stepdaughter. I have no home and was left with no money. If it weren't for my family helping me, I would be completely homeless. My mental health is in a bad place as I have found out that the cheating was happening even when we were just dating. It was all fake or some kind of game for her, and I'm left to pick up the pieces. I was cheated on and abused, and I am the only one being punished. I'm told there's little I can do by my lawyer, whom I trust a great deal as he is a trusted family friend. What do I do with all this emotion? How do I fix myself? I know I need to take baby steps, get another job, etc. But leaving the house feels like an insurmountable task right now. I'm struggling with severe depression and anxiety. Being in public, even with my friends, is extremely taxing and leaves me a sobbing mess when I finally can drive home. I feel broken, and nothing is getting better. I don't know what to do. Update. The title says it all. A friend informed me that my ex-wife will be bringing the AP to our divorce hearing as a final jab at me. How should I deal with this? Several friends have offered to come as support, but some have said I should just do my best to ignore them. What would you do? Update. My divorce hearing was finally today. My post history contains my full story. But to summarize, I was abused by my ex-wife after catching her in our bed with another man just days after Christmas last year. I tried to reconcile, but over time, I kept catching her talking to the same guy and even planning to see others out of town, all while receiving inappropriate sexual snapchats and texts from them. 
She repeatedly lied to my face, claiming she had cut contact, but it was always the same story. I finally told her I was leaving and would be filing for divorce. She threatened to slaughter herself if I left. Despite her threats I am alive, and she is permanently out of my life. I came home from the courthouse and hit a few new personal bests at the gym. I'm feeling great overall. She doesn't know where I live or my new job. I moved out of town and kept these details from her. This woman, who I loved dearly and would have done anything for, took everything from me. My job, my car, my home, my stepdaughter, my marriage, my mental health, and potentially my baby. Although I am confident it was a peas baby, she aborted it when I asked for a DNA test. This entire year has been an unending hell for me. All the while, she blamed me for leaving and tearing apart our family. By the time she arrived this morning, I was already speaking to my lawyer. We just needed to be present and get the papers signed by the judge. I never looked at her once, not even when she tried to hand me mail from the house. I just grabbed it and kept walking. I did notice that a P didn't come with her, which was odd since she had been telling mutual friends he would be coming. Everything proceeded fine. I was stressed and emotional on the inside, but I kept a gentle smile on my face and tried to keep my spirits high. She sounded like she was about to cry, but I never looked. It wasn't until I got home that I found a note mixed in with my mail. AP wasn't there because he got another woman pregnant. I tore up the note and threw it away. She had a loving husband and still cheated, lied, and hurt me, leaving me for a loser who was seeing other girls. The cherry on top is that AP hates being a father. He is lazy, used to beat my ex-wife when they were together, and drops his daughter off with his mother whenever he has her. She called him by his first name and called me dad because she barely knew him. His own mother cried on Christmas while we shared a drink because she was so happy her granddaughter had me in her life. This new baby will likely ruin his life even further. My only hope is that whoever he is having this baby with will get away from him as soon as possible. For the baby's sake, despite how energetic I am, I feel very alone today. I'm bouncing between feeling very happy and very muted. Sorry if this is all over the place, I'm just feeling very strange. I thought it would feel better, but if I'm being honest, I wish none of us were suffering. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.